Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to another episode of our Endless Runner Unity tutorial series, where we're covering all the basics you need to make a fun little Endless Runner game. Uh, so, in this episode, we're going to take a look at adding a little bit of extra danger into the game. At the moment, the only way our player can die is by falling off the bottom of the screen when he's running along. But what we want to do is add a nice little new threat into the game of um, the player hitting some spikes, basically that'll be randomly uh, created on our platforms, much the same way we're randomly creating our coins. So, what we're going to need first is, we're going to need uh, the art files that we're using. So in our platformer pack that we've been using throughout the series, we go into our sprite sheets folder, and uh, we want to make sure we're putting this in the right place actually, in our art folder here. So we want to click on the sprite sheet we're using, which is... Uh, this one here, sprite sheet tiles. If I just open this up here, you'll see there's down the bottom here, there's a couple of little spikes that we're going to use. So we'll just drag that into our folder here. And then once that finishes importing, we're going to use the same settings we're using on our other files. So we want 128 pixels per unit and point filtering and true color format. So we'll just go 128. We want to make sure sprite mode is multiple as well. So that we can just carve out that little, those little spikes out of the the whole thing. See the size is 1024 by 2048. So 2048 being the biggest size, we want to leave it at that size there. And format true color, like you said. So we apply those changes. And then we go into our sprite editor. And then we'll zoom in on the spikes here. And we're just going to click and drag just around the rough shape of the spikes. And... There, that looks roughly okay. But what I want to do is, because we know these spikes, obviously we want them to be on the ground, and we don't necess necessarily know that this is going to be one block high. We could make it uh, exactly 128 by 128, but that's kind of unnecessary. All we need to do is get our pivot point here and move it down to the bottom, just like that. So now we know that if we position, um, say for example, with our if we just supply. We just named this spikes. I'm just going to explain my thoughts here. Um, we'll apply those changes, and if we go back in here, so say with our platforms here, we know that our platform generator appears at the middle of the platform. So we we know that if we were to go up by half the width, so if we go up by 0.5, we'll be at the very top of the platform. And then we know that we can, if we were to put the spikes there, if they're using the the bottom as the pivot point. Then when we place them in, they'll be exactly touching the top of the platform, which is exactly what we want. So now we have uh, some spikes. If we click the little side arrow here, we've got our little spike dudes here. So we might as well drag them into the scene, just like that. And we need to make it so that they'll kill our player. So at the moment, we have our little box at the bottom of the screen that follows along with the camera that we've called the catcher. And that kills the player automatically. And the way, the way that kills the player is <clears throat> using the player controller script, it finds out if there's any box that has the tag kill box. And if it is, then it kills the player. So we're basically just going to do the exact same thing with the spikes. If the player runs into the spikes, they're going to get killed. So on our spikes here, we need to give it the tag kill box. And we need to add the component um, box collider 2D just like our catcher has here. And we didn't make that a trigger because we're using it as soon as it touches the box. So here we're leaving it not a trigger as well, which is perfect. And the only other thing, because we're going to do the exact same thing we did with our platforms and with our coins, we're going to create an object pool for these spikes. What we need to do is do the exact same way of destroying the platforms when they're finished being used. So not destroying, but making them inactive. So we need to give it the exact same script that we have on our, if we go to our prefabs here, on our platforms and on our coins, we have our platform destroyer script. Uh, so we're gonna add that in here as well. So we'll just say platform destroyer, which again, we really should have ca just called that object destroyer, but that's okay. Uh, so now that we have our, our basic little spike set up, what we need to do is drag that in as a prefab into our folder here, and then delete this original spikes. Uh, and create a new empty that we're going to call uh, spike pool and this is going to be our object pool for our spikes so we'll add a component onto our spike pool here 
if it'll let me, here we go. Uh, we're going to add our object pool script to that. And then the pool object we're going to use is our spikes. And by default, we'll create, say, five of them. Okay, so now we have our spike pool being created, but there's no spikes. And we should actually, before we go any further, we should make sure and test this spike to make sure it's actually killing the player. So if we just press play here, uh, we should see he'll run into it and immediately be dead. There we go. Died straight away. So we know that's working perfectly fine. Uh, and our, our spikes got destroyed on the second run through, which is what we want as well. Uh, so yeah, so now we have our spike pool. Uh, we'll just delete these spikes from the scene again. We don't want them there. Uh, we have our spike pool, but we have no way of our spikes being generated at the moment. And what, like I said, we want our spikes to be generated uh, at the platform on the platform, uh, but at the very top of the platform. So we don't want them generating just right in the middle. We want to add on the height. But something else we want to do is it would be a little bit boring if our spikes was just in the middle of the platform every single time. So what we're going to do is randomly make it decide at any point from the end end down here to the other end down here it can place the spikes anywhere along that thing which is again it's a very simple and straightforward thing to do so we need to start doing that we need to go into our script folder and open our platform generator script um, and what we're going to do is just first of all we're going to add in two new uh, little uh, references here so there's our coin generator that we used before and our random coin try. So we're going to use something very similar for our spikes because we want it to randomly decide whether it should place the spike or not. So again, we're going to basically give it a number between 0 and 100 and say if it's below that number, then create the spikes. So we had random coin threshold last time and this time we'll have random spike threshold. And we also want to be able to access the object pool of our spikes. So uh, we're going to say public object pool or object pooler. Uh, we're going to call this the spike pool. So we know we're able to access that pool of spikes. Okay, so if you scroll down here, so here's where we have our random coins being placed. And that's, that's perfectly fine. So what we want to do after our random coins have been decided whether they're being placed, we're going to randomly decide uh, our random spikes. So we're going to use the exact same bit of code that we have here. I'm just going to copy this and paste it in there. But instead of it being below the random coin threshold, we're going to have it be below the random spike threshold. And then, of course, we need our open and closing curly brackets. And then the basics of what we're going to have in here is especially we need to create a new spike. So what we're going to do is create a game object. Uh, oh, that should be a capital O, game object. Uh, we'll call this new spike. Because what we want to do is we want to be able to make some changes to the new spike after we've instantiated it, or after we've set it to be active now. Uh, we want to be able to move it into the position that we want and stuff like that. So we're going to say game object new spike is equal to go to our spike pool and get pooled object. So what that'll do is it'll go to our spike, our spike pool and it'll grab a new object from there that isn't being used. Like we have set up in our pool object script. Our object pooler script, sorry. Um, okay, so we've got an object. We need to give that a new position to go to. So we'll say our new spike dot transform transform dot position is equal to our transform dot position which is where the generator currently is which will be in the middle of a new platform has been created but we're going to make adjustments to that in a second and we also want to set the, ro the rotation of this so new spike dot transform dot rotation is equal to transform dot rotation and that's fine and then we need to set our spike to be active so new spike dot set active bracket true because as we know our object pool and script it doesn't set an object to be an active straight away we have to go and manually activate it just for various different use cases that we might have uh, so that's fine so basically what's happening there is our spike 
a, a, a new spike object is being gotten and then removing it in position and setting it to the right rotation and stuff as well. So that's fine. But that position we're moving it to, that's not really very helpful. We need to be able to move it on top of the platform. So what we're going to do is create a new vector tree that we're going to call our spike position. And so a vector tree has an X and a Y and a Z value. So our spike position uh, is equal to new vector tree. And then in brackets, we're going to say 0F because what we're going to do is add this to our transform position. So our X position, which is left and right, we don't want to add anything to that just yet. We're going to randomly decide that, but just for the moment, we're not going to add anything. But to our Y value, we want to make it move up half the height of the platforms. And we know our platforms are one thick. So therefore, we need to move up 0.5. And our Z position, we don't need to change that at all either. Uh, so bracket there. Uh, and basically down here, then in our transform that position, we just say transform that position plus spike. Spike. Uh, I don't know why I spelled that spike s position. There we go. Just spike position. So transform that position plus spike position. So now we we'll, before we start adding anything random in there, we're going to save this and go back in here. And we want to make test this out now and make sure it's working with the most basic setup that we have here. So if we go to our platform generator, we're going to set our spike threshold. We'll set that to be 75. We probably don't want it to be that high. We don't want that many spikes really in the game as we're playing, but we can just set it there for our test. And we need to drag our spike pool into there. So we know we're getting the right thing. And now if we press play, we should get our spikes appearing randomly on some platforms, but in the middle of the platforms. So there we go, there's one. Oh, I got killed. Um, hopefully I won't die too many times here. So we're jumping. Oh, okay, I'm not doing so well. I should really just make advantage of my double jump, shouldn't I? Oh, but as you can see, okay, we're getting our, our spikes appearing in the dead center of our platforms, which is fine. That's okay, we're getting some random, some random spikes, but it's not very interesting having the spikes in the middle of the platform. So like I said, we want to move them uh, to different positions along the platform. But the problem, of course, is that we don't know how we we can't just decide to randomly pick between, say, moving it left five and moving it right five because the platforms are all different widths. But handily, we have already gotten the width of the platform that we're using elsewhere. Uh, if we go up here, we can see we're using, we're getting the platform widths for all the objects. And if we look where, should be around here. Here we go. So when our, when our setting our transform position, we're adding on the platform widths based on the platform selector. So we're able to use the exact same thing down here to uh, randomly select between the platform widths. So we're going to create a new float that we will call our spike x position. So this will be a new x value that we're going to add on uh, with our spike position and we're going to use that in here. But we're going to say this will be uh, a random dot range from um, our platform width, platform widths, uh, and the currently selected platform. So that would be our platform selector. So picking from our platform width array based on the current platform that's selected. What we're going to say is, so we want to go to the left from the middle and to the right. So obviously we want half of that width. So our platform width divided by two. Um, and we want it to go from the left, so so going from zero, we want if we want it to go left, we need to say that this is a minus value, so minus platform width divided by two, and the max value that we want in our random range is basically the exact same thing, but instead of minus, we're going to go plus. So we can just paste that in there like that, and now we can see we've got um, basically half the platform width. So say our platform width is say one of them is six. 
So we have zero, so we're saying, so half of that minus, so we'll have minus three. So that'll be, take, when we put that in here then, it'll be minus three from where our current position, from where the transform position is, or alternatively, uh, plus three. So it'll move ahead three spaces to the right. And we want to randomly pick between those, and then in our x value here, we're gonna, instead of zero, we're gonna say our spike x position. Now, this might throw up a couple of kind of funkily placed spikes. So we're gonna have, oh, no, we got a problem there on line 94. What have we got? Random range. Oh, here we go. I know what the problem is. Uh, so platform, we instead of saying platform widths, we said platform width, which is a completely different thing. A platform width is just a, a float value that's being stored up here. We were supposed to be looking at the array of float values. So that was what we did slightly wrong there. So we go back in here. And just wait for that to compile again. And now, now if we run, uh, like I said, we, there'll be a, a slight problem with this, but we're gonna fix that in a second. So we might see it, hopefully. Uh, we're not seeing it here. But as we can see, our spikes are moving around a little bit now. They're kind of changing positions, getting a little bit more interesting. That one's almost showing us, but the thing with um, using just purely the widths of the platforms, sometimes what we could end up with, and I'm kind of hoping that we're going to get it here. There we go. We can see this one here. We've got our spikes hanging over the edge of the platform, which is not what we want at all. I also noticed that we've got a little line on the edge of the the spikes, which is what we want either. Uh, I'm gonna fix that first, just by going back to our art file and into our sprite editor for that spikes file. Basically all we've got is we've got it one over one too far. So we just pop that over like that and apply that change. Go back in here. Okay, so what happened was it's hanging over the edge which is not what we want at all. We want to make sure that our spikes can't be hanging over the edge. And basically the easy way to do that is say, okay, so our, our platform widths here, that's um, our minus value. What we will just, we'll just add on one F onto that. So that'll just add one on. So then we know that it'll always be uh, at least one space in from the edge of the platform. And the same on the right edge, we'll instead of adding on one, we'll take away one. So it'll always be in one space from the right edge of the platform. Uh, so we save that, and now if we go back in, we should see that our spikes will always be exactly on the platform, just like, it, like we had. We could randomly run into a case where, um, with the previous one, we wouldn't see that anyway, but as, as we saw, we can see we're getting a lot of them at the edges here now, but they're still being randomly placed within the platforms. So there you go. That's the basics of adding some a little bit more challenge to the game, adding some spikes kind of scare to scare our players a little bit. Uh, like I said, having it on seventy five is probably a little bit high. We'll put pop that down to about twenty five, maybe might be a bit more uh, friendly for our players. But everything is running absolutely perfectly fine, just the way we want it to. So that's perfect. So yeah. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back soon with some more endless runner goodness. And in the meantime, keep watching out for more and keep avoiding all the spikes that you find in your life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.